but the proper tool for installing this is a hot air rework station. A hot air rework station is ideal, but if you're like me and don't have that equipment, now I have the equipment. This is the A10 ST862D hot air station, and I'm banking on it making my life a lot easier for certain repair tasks. As we start unboxing, I wanna first thank A10 for providing me the product. In this video, we'll cover the basic features, operation, and trial it on real components to see how it performs. If you're watching the video, I'm guessing you're already familiar, but I'd be remiss not to make a few quick points on what a hot air station even is. First and foremost, it's a soldering tool, but unlike an iron, it applies heat through convection rather than conduction. It's basically a heat gun with fancier controls. Where this tool excels is on any board component with a high pin count and anything where the pads are underneath the chip, such as a BGA or CSP. It's either very difficult or even impossible to safely remove these types of components with a standard soldering iron. And that's where the hot air station comes in. Let's quick finish the unbox and then get into testing. Here are various tip attachments which modulate the airflow. It looks like we have eight in total. There's an ESD wrist strap, and a power cord. Pulling the foam, we can remove the station itself and the heat gun attached to it. Last item is the holder. Now we can pull off all the plastic wrap and reveal the station. And here is everything from the box in all its glory. Now let's turn it on and see what controls we have. The buttons in the center, one, two, and three are programmable settings we can save for temperature and airflow. We can manually adjust each of these. It looks like the max temperature is 480C, which is quite high and I'm glad it's capable of that. Holding any of these three buttons until we hear a beep should save this setting to that button. Flipping out and back into it, we can see now it's at the 480C that I set, so that works and saving a preset is very simple. And now let's look at adjusting the airflow. It goes from zero to 100%, which in real units is 20 to 120 liters per minute, according to the manual. This setting gets saved in the preset as well, if we decide to do that. That's really all the controls we have and all that we need. So the interface is easy to use and that's great. Now to actually start using it, we can choose one of these various nozzle caps and just push it on the end of the gun to install. Then we can turn it on by pressing this button on the side and it turns off with the same button. Now let's give this a real test and try to desolder something that would otherwise be difficult with a regular iron. I don't have anything real to fix right now, but I found this scrap Game Boy Advance circuit board in my stash, and this amplifier chip seems like a good option. This is genuinely my first time using one of these, and I don't want to start with something too difficult right away. For initial settings here, I'm using a temperature of 400C and 50% airflow. After applying flux, it took less than 20 seconds for the chip to come free with my tweezers. Unfortunately, I jiggled the camera, but even worse, I reflowed and knocked off a nearby capacitor, as you can see here. I set the airflow down to 10%, as 50 felt too strong, like it could actually start blowing the smaller chips off with just the force of the air alone. And with this setting, I was able to reposition that capacitor and reflow it back in place without any issue. With that problem taken care of, I'm going to clean up the area and pretend I'm replacing this chip with a fresh one. Even though, it's the exact same. I just want to see if we can reattach it as well as we removed it. So then we'll apply some new flux, and now I set the gun to 25% airflow and I'm still at 400C. After a few seconds when the solder starts flowing, I move the chip around until the position feels right. Then I back off with the tweezers and let the hot air do the rest of the work. It was around 40 seconds in total until I removed the heat. After cleaning up, I dare say these solder joints all look quite good, and in general, that worked very well. Overall thoughts on this station are highly positive. It's easy to operate, heats and cools rapidly, and it worked without any real problems on my first attempt. I'm glad we could cover the basics, and although I don't have anything on hand that needs real fixing, I'm looking forward to the next challenging repair when I can give this unit and myself a real trial. For now, the A10 Hot Air Station gets a thumbs up from me. I hope this was useful for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.